In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to implement custom fonts into your Corona projects. Fonts are widely available across the internet at sites like fonts.com and dafont.com. When using a font, be sure that you have a license to use that font in your project. In this lesson, we'll be using two custom fonts. One font is a display font called Boris Black Blocks. The other is a dingbat font called Monsters. Before we can use these fonts with our project, we need to create a file called build.settings and store it within the root directory of our project. We'll go to File, New File, Empty File, Next, build.settings, choose the project folder, and now within this file we'll type the following. Settings equals open and close curly brace. iPhone equals open and close curly brace with a comma after that closing curly brace. PList equals open and close curly brace with yet another comma after the closing curly brace. And finally, UI app fonts equals open and close curly brace. Make sure that you're following the case of all these names so that UI app fonts has a capital U, I, A, and F. Now within UI app fonts, we'll type, open a string, monsters.ttf, close the string, comma, and then open a string, Boris black blocks.ttf, close the string. The string here refers to the file name of the fonts. The fonts are in the root directory of the project. It is case sensitive, so make sure that when you're typing your file names that you follow the names exactly as they are displayed. Often when the fonts don't load, even though they're in the right location and you think you've got them typed out correctly, the error can be traced to the build.settings file. If you don't have a build.settings file, the custom fonts will not work. So you have to go through this process to enable them, at least on iPhone. Okay, let's save this and now go to the project file the main.lua file, let's call up our little monster. Local monster equals display.newText. And now the first argument is the character for the text. We'll type a lowercase a, that'll give us um, a dingbat of a monster that looks like he's crouching, comma. Now zero, comma, zero, this is the left and top I position my elements after they're created, so I always use zero, zero. Now this next part is the most important part. This is a reference to the font. Now what you wanna type here is not the file name, but the system name of the font. To find this out, we'll go back to the project folder and we'll double click monsters.ttf. And you see here in the title bar, it says monsters, but with no extension. This is the system name of the font. And that's what we're going to use. It's not always the case that the system name is just the file name without the extension. So you need to double check that. Start a string monsters.ttf. Oh, my bad. Monsters, no TTF. Close the string. Now the size, 120. Okay, let's position it. Monster.x equals half of our width. We're used to doing this. And monster.y equals half of the height. Save it, go to the simulator, and relaunch. And there's our little monster. And he's waiting to get some interactivity, which we'll do here in a moment. Let's create some more text using our custom fonts. So we'll type local hello equals display dot new text and start a string. Let's see, tap me eyes hungry. Close the string zero and zero for the top and left because we'll position it in a moment. And then for this font, we'll use Boris black blocks. Remember this is the system name, not the font file name. And for the size, we'll say 24. Okay, let's position it on the screen. Hello. 
dot x equals half of the width and hello dot y equals half of the height. Okay, save it, go to the simulator, relaunch, and there we have tap me eyes hungry. So let's put that a little lower. Let's take the height and close the current equation within some parentheses and add an additional offset of 80 pixels. There, that's a lot better. So now we're gonna add some interactivity to our monster. We will make it so that when we tap the monster, we'll cycle through a series of characters. Because this is a dingbat, it'll look like an animation. So let's now type monster colon add event listener. And we'll listen for the touch event. And we will put the listener on the object itself. Now, function monster colon touch open and close parentheses e and end if e dot phase double equals ended or canceled e dot phase double equals canceled then end I happen to have the table already created off screen, so let me copy that and paste it to save time. Now within the ended phase, we'll create a timer that's going to loop through this table. So self.timer equals timer.perform with delay, open and close parentheses, Every 30 milliseconds, we'll call the nom nom function, which is yet to be created. And we'll do it for the length of the table. Now, when you use a, a hash sign with a table, it will return the length of the table. So this table is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 indices long. So that means self.timer here will run 10 times, every interval being 30 milliseconds. If you're wondering about this self.timer, uh, I like to store internal timers as properties within objects. So since the touch object here is registered on the object itself, we're using self to refer to the object, create a, creating a new property called timer, and then storing the timer within that property. Okay, let's create the nom nom function. So above self.timer within the ended phase, we will type local function nom nom and E, end. So E represents the timer object. Now, the first time the timer runs, if, then end, if E.count, the count property of the timer object re returns the current count equals one. This is the first time the timer runs. Likewise, we can get the last time the timer runs. If open and close, then end e dot count double equals the length of the table chomp. This is the last time the timer runs. On the last time, we want to clear the timer and set it to nil. So self dot timer equals nil. Got a little bit ahead of myself. We also need to cancel the timer. We'll do that before we nil it out. Timer dot cancel, open and close parentheses, and then the, the timer you want to stop, self dot timer. Okay, so now we need to actually cycle through the animations. So in between this first and last um, portion here, monster.text equals chomp, open bracket, close bracket. And now we're going to feed e.count into the brackets so that we can accommodate extra indices if we want and cycle through multiple times if we want later. We're gonna add some code uh, modulo, which is the percent sign hash chomp plus one. And you have to add the 
uh, plus one here when you're using the modulo because um, if you have a number a number modulo itself, it will return zero, and we don't want to try to access a zero index because in Lua, all of the first indices are one, not zero. Okay, let's save it and run it. Now I'll tap the monster and you see that he does his chomp. Let's add a few more things to this particular project. Uh, we'll add some text to the side so that when we click the monster, it'll display right by his head, sort of like a thought bubble. So local nom equals display dot new text and open string nom nom zero zero Boris black blocks remember that's the system name not the file name and we will use the size of 12 okay now let's position it nom dot x we'll position it relative to the monster equals monster dot x plus 60 pixels to the right nom dot y equals monster dot y same y as the monster let's rotate this text a little bit nom dot rotation equals negative 15 and save it let's relaunch oh looks like we have an error let's check it out line 32 uh, line 30 oh I forgot the comma just before the font name no problem save it and relaunch so now we'll make it so that when we tap the monster, nom nom will appear only when he's actually opening his mouth. So let's set nom dot is visible to false. And now this is why I added this line down here within the nom nom function, if e dot count double equals one. So what we want to do is on the first count, we want to show this text, nom dot is visible equals true so now we can see the text and on the last count we want to hide the text so nom dot is visible equals false okay let's relaunch tap him nom nom and now what I've done also is I've created a sound that we can load so we'll do this right before monster local nom sound equals audio dot load sound open and close parentheses media forward slash nom dot a i f f all right and so we'll have it play at the first count audio dot play nom sound okay let's launch it nom nom and there we go so now every time we tap the monster we're cycling nom, through nom. some animations here and the animations are deceptive these are really just different characters if I changed the font we would see these letters cycle through instead of uh, the different letter forms but since we're actually using a dingbat font which is a graphic um, that's mapped to a character we can sort of fake out an animation. And so within the touch function, on the ended phase, I create a new timer and store it within a custom property called dot timer that is on the monster object itself. That timer then runs the length of the animation table with an interval of 30 milliseconds between frames and calls this custom function nom nom. Then here within nom nom, I use the the dot count property of the E object here, which is representative of the timer, in order to cycle through the table using um, the table name and then E dot count fed into um, the table index. And then on the first and last um, portion of the timer, I en enable the uh, visual to be seen, play the nom nom sound and then hide the visual of the uh, text, cancel the timer, and then set the timer to nil. And you, when you use timers, you want to really be sure that when you're done with them, you cancel them, and then you nil them out. 
One final change that we can make is the addition of some code to accommodate for iPhone 4 Retina displays. We'll do the following to each of the new text objects. Where the size is located within the constructor, we'll type times 2. Now, with each object, just under, underneath the constructor, we'll type monster.xscale equals 0 0.5 and monster.yscale equals 0 0.5. We'll repeat this for the hello and nom objects. Hello.xscale equals 0 0.5. Hello.yscale equals 0 0.5. Now let's do it to the nom object. nom.xscale equals 0 0.5. nom.yscale equals 0 0.5. What we're doing is we are taking the size that we would like and multiplying it by 2. Then we are scaling by half the total size of the object. This allows for double the pixels in the same area. So let's now relaunch the project. And actually you can see that the type is a little bit sharper. I am using the iPhone 4 simulator and we get the same result. Nom nom. Nom nom. And that's how you implement custom fonts into your Corona projects. For a small fee, you can download the project files for this tutorial at cheetomosquito.com.